Bertrand Russell, a famous philosopher, mathematician, logician, historian, and all-around super smart sexy guy, once wrote, It must have required many ages to discover that a brace of pheasants and a couple of days were both instances of the number two. The degree of abstraction involved is far from easy. Hmm. I like the quote, but really? Because it sounds pretty easy to me. How does all this squishy stuff inside our skulls allow us to understand math and abstract ideas anyway? Well, according to phrenology, a pseudoscience from the 1800s, the math organ, the part of the brain that does calculations, is right about here. The phrenologists thought you could predict a person's abilities by feeling the bumps on their skull, and they found a bunch of people who were good at math who also had a really big bump in the same place on their head, so they figured, ah, that must be the math organ. <laughs> Seems legit to me. There is some truth to it though. Modern neuroscience has found there is a specific part of the brain that controls our intuitive ability to estimate things like how many marbles are in a jar, or converting Fahrenheit to Celsius and fun stuff like that. That intuition is thanks to the approximate number system, also often called our number sense. And that term was coined by this guy named Tobias Danzig, who wrote Number, the language of science. It was Albert Einstein's favorite math book, so how's that for an endorsement? The approximate number system seems to be located in the parietal lobe, more specifically in a structure called the intraparietal sulcus. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm not exactly a neuroscientist, Ooh, but I can quote one. We now know that the human brain has evolved specialized circuits to exploit the fact that much of the perceptible world is countable. This is why neurological damage can affect numbers and nothing else, and why people are born dyscalculic. Just like some people are dyslexic, meaning their brain has trouble reading words, a similar percentage of the population is dyscalculic, meaning their brain has trouble with numbers. And one study found that children who are dyscalculic even have less gray matter in the intraparietal sulcus. And a handful of people even have what's called arithmetic epilepsy. Their epileptic seizures are triggered whenever they do math. Now I know I shouldn't say this, but a really small part of me wishes I had that just because it would have been the perfect excuse not to do my math homework. Unlike a real calculator, our brain calculators only handle estimates. And the more objects there are, the less accurate your estimate becomes. This has been called the magnitude effect. And there's also what's called the distance effect. The closer together two numbers are, the harder it is to tell them apart. All that stuff helps to explain why we can only perceive up to about four objects without counting them. There's even a name for that ability. It's called subitizing. The ability to take in the numerosity of a visual array of objects at a glance without counting. Now, once there are more than about four objects, we have to either count or estimate. And it turns out everyone's estimating ability, or number sense, is different. Professor Justin Halberta created a test that measures your number sense. You see a bunch of blue and yellow dots for only an instant, and you have to guess which color has more dots. Since you don't have time to count them, you're forced to rely on your number sense. So what about this connection between um, having this good approximate number sense and your later mathematical ability. In the study we most recently ran, it was the number one most powerful predictor, cognitive predictor of success or failure in school mathematics. Okay. Let's see how I do. <laughs> I feel like I'm just guessing randomly, but I seem to be getting them mostly correct. Correct? Correct? <laughs> correct? Ah. Oh. Darn. <laughs> Dude. I'm awesome at this. <laughs> I was not expecting that because I'm terrible at arithmetic. This is amazing. Ah, uh, hang on here. This, this explains it. I'm really good, but I'm also really, really slow. That actually explains a lot. The very latest research, just published in January 2012, actually created an artificial brain that taught itself how to estimate the number of objects in an image without being pre-programmed to do so. Wow. As the lead researcher says, 
It answers the question of how numerosity emerges without teaching anything about numbers in the first place. This stuff is just way, 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 way over my head. And it's amazing, and I love it. <laughs> if an artificial brain can teach itself how to estimate the number of objects in an image, regardless of all their properties like color, size, stuff like that, then clearly abstract thinking is not really that difficult after all. And it doesn't take ages to recognize that a brace of pheasants and a couple of days are both instances of the number two. So I'm sorry, Birch and Russell, but despite your sexy mustache, I guess you were wrong. That's okay, though. I forgive you.